Winding down tarpon season gets my head start, you know, thinking about things I've got plans going forward. And um, the trip to Louisiana is always something I look forward to each year. Traveling to Louisiana from Southwest Florida is, you know, a little bit of preparation goes into that. And, you know, it's not like you just drive across the, you know, the state and you're fishing in three hours. You know, we're talking 12, 13 hour drive. And, um, you know, many times it's, it's like, you gotta make sure you have everything you can possibly think of. And, uh, and you know, the excitement level of, from the time you leave to the time you get there, you're ready to go fishing when you get there, regardless that you just spent 13, 14 hours in a truck. Um, and that's the thing, you know, it, the place is so uh, exciting to fish because it's, you know, it's just a different fishery altogether. And, you know, leaving from tarpon season in the grind every day to having a little, little fun, a little fun time on the bow of a boat uh, definitely gets me excited about it. Captain Greg Deeney, man, I, I think that that guy I've known maybe 10 years. And, um, you know, it's funny that how things come full circle because when I first met the guy, it was through kind of the fly fishing film tour back in the day. And, um, you know, I knew that guy was pretty dialed into the program anyway. But over those years of just kind of, you know, watching through Instagram and Facebook and t chatting back and forth, those things, you know, to see those days come together where we can actually spend some time on the boat together, I was super pumped to be able to do that. I came to Louisiana, uh, baseball actually brought me to Louisiana. Uh, I played baseball at Tulane from 2003 to 2005. And uh, while I was at school, started fishing in the marsh and uh, went off and played minor league baseball for four years and came back and started guiding full time. What, what's interesting about the fishing in Louisiana what, and what drew me to it uh, is just the, the vastness of the fishery and uh, the ability you have to kind of just go kind of do your own thing and not see other boats. Uh, the fishing is absolutely incredible year round and uh, it's just a great place to uh, run a guide business. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. There you go. Come on. Come on, this way. He said, that doesn't taste like a pogey anymore. <laughs> that's a pogey with hooks. He's still pretty fired up. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, he got them all too. <laughs> <laughs> Those are meaty hooks, so okay. let's try not to connect you to them. Yeah, I'll try not to do that as well. Yeah. Dude, well, old top one of our Louisiana redfish yeah, right there. Yeah, buddy. That was nice. Came and you're right, it was about that bone color, man. Yeah, they liked it. They like that knock, knock, knock noise. Yeah. Here. It just gets their attention. Well, in Florida, it's all about the quiet. Yeah. <laughs> here, it's all about the, all, all the noise. Make as much racket as you can. Absolutely. That's Pretty awesome. fish. 27, 28? Well, you, you fish tournaments more than I do. You should, I mean, <laughs> I, I've been out of the game for a couple of years, though. <laughs> I mean, I, I would say probably I'd like to think I'd take that one back. <laughs> I think Pretty close. I think he's going to be over the slot. It probably. I, I'd say probably 29 and a half. I love that blue in their tail. Yeah. So pretty. Now, what's your thoughts on it? Is that from the yeah, shrimp? I think it's from the, the shrimp and the crabs. Yeah. I think it's whatever that, that vitamin is. And yeah. You know, I think, was it keratin or whatever? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Kind of puts that blue in there. That's cool. All right, let me get her in the water. Yeah, let her rip. Uh, my goals having Jay on the boat were, one, just getting to know him better. Uh, we, we haven't really had any time to spend one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, together and, uh, and just, you know, kind of going out and having a, having a good time as friends. Um, getting, getting to uh, show him my fishery and 
you know, just kind of bounce ideas back and forth uh, between the two of us. Uh, keep, I think he's over yep, here. Yep, mm -hmm. Bring it. Got him. Stick him. Stick him. Yeah, baby. There you go. That's a good one. That's a good one. Good job. Good eyeballs on that one. Yeah, brother. Hard to miss that one. Here's another one coming at you. Head waking. Oh yeah, there's a whole bunch coming off the point. Oh yeah. Should I grab a rod? Oh, yeah. yeah, grab that that spin rod back here. Well, last I saw, they were. Yeah. This is a perfect case scenario, right off that point. Yep. You saw it. Come here, baby. Look, he's got a, what is that on him? A mora? you see that? Does he really? Or there was something flashing on his side. He's got a, he got a knot on his dome. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Look at that Look thing. At that thing dude. <laughs> Oh yeah. Take the pretty side of him. Yeah. <laughs> he's got a, uh, a, a, a hematoma. I don't know what he's got going on over there, Look huh? Look at that. Wow. Oh, it's like a... Oh, he's got something stuck in there he that does. just grew in? He does have something stuck in there. Yeah. Take your fish, brother. Dude. I'll trade you rods. You can take the rod there. Yep. Yep. He was straight up orange sitting on top there, wasn't he? Oh yeah. In Louisiana, you know, fishing the marsh, you know, it's a, it's a lot about just catching the attention of those fish. You know, many of those fish don't get to see a lot of people. So if they see it, most generally they're gonna be able to eat it. You know, they'll, they'll chase it down in many cases. But it's, it's really about getting the attention of the fish in that short window. You know, they know that there's gonna be plenty of baits coming by them, so they're not gonna maybe run out of their skin to try to get it. But if it comes by them and they see it, they're definitely gonna gobble it up. Sweet. Making TV, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, <laughs> well done on the spot. That was cool. Very cool. And then as soon as, you, as, soon as it hit the water, you're like, right tip left. <laughs> right tip left. They pulled it right, right to him. Right him, yep. <laughs> Give me that. White tail. Oh, I see it. Bring it. Bring it, 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 bring it. Leave it. Little twitch. Twist. Oh, guy. Oh. Nice. Nice. Mm hmm. I believe you made the old Deanie mistake. Uh, <laughs> he, he showed himself back on that. Yep. That one didn't quite taste like a pogey, did it? <laughs> They're wearing me out. That's pretty. The great part about these redfish is that they, you know, when they do get shallow and they do give you these these great sight fishing opportunities, you can get very intimate with them. Um, you don't. It's not a 60 foot cast. It's not an 80 foot cast. 90 percent of the shots that we get are going to be inside of 30 feet. Um, you see the bite. Um, you come tight, and it's just it's off to the races. I mean, these things are big. They're mean. Uh, they're blasting mullet. They're tailing on crabs. They're eating shrimp. Uh, you know, anything that gets in their way, most of the time they're going to eat it. You know, when we're back and, you know, we're just pulling along the edges here and, and Greg knew where some of these little cuts were that were going to be falling lots of a lot of water. And when I say just water running, I'm not talking about just trickling out of the marsh. I'm talking damn near Whitewater River. <laughs> it was amazing to see that much water come through this little cut and uh, fish were stacked around it. Redfish and trout, there's just all kinds of stuff going on right there at those little drains. Wait, got him, nice. <laughs> oh, dude! <laughs> oh boy, that's 
Oh, look at that one. Another one. Go around. Hold on. I'll, I'll spin it. We're good. Nice. Super cool. Did you see? I mean, I was a little behind him, and he and like he spun around and came back for it. Yeah. And as soon as you like bump, I was like, yeah. Yep. And yep. Boom, got him. Crushed it. Crushed it. And you can tell, look where he's hooked. Yep, right in the button. Started out with that top water this morning. I'll tell you what, sight fishing these right here in the marsh. What's all about, man? That's awesome, dude. Super cool. I had a blast fishing with you, man. This is, this is a, exactly what I was hoping to see coming here to Louisiana. And uh, that right there, that's a quality fish. That is. Chunky Louisiana redfish. We'll send him back home. He's gonna go up there and eat some more shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> he gone. Got you again. Yes, he does. Cool man. Dude, well done. That was fun. Absolutely. Let's uh maybe shake it on back to the dock before that Mother Nature cats up to us. That'll work. Summertime storms, I mean, it happens. I think it probably happens everywhere. Southwest Florida is known for it. The afternoon thunderstorms uh, can be pretty gnarly. And, and really, Louisiana is no different. I've been caught there many, many times in those storms, and uh, there's nowhere to hide. I mean, it's flat marsh everywhere you look. And many times, you're miles away from the dock. So you gotta take that into account and just be smart about being safe. You know, with that weather rolling in, uh, there was no way. I, I mean, I'm always the shortest guy on the boat, so I'm not super concerned about lightning, but the guy holding the 22 foot long graphite pole, we need to go. <laughs> you know, I, I really th can't thank Greg enough. You know, we, we've been trying to put this together for a long time and, and you know, our schedules are you know, jam packed and really in the time that uh, he's down here, he's tarpon fishing and, and same and likewise. And, you know, to have a little window to where I could drive Louisiana, jump on the boat with that guy. Yeah, I'm ready to do it again. I hope you're ready, Greg. Mm -hmm.